Hey guys, and welcome to using Blender for traditional artists. And no, we are not talking about making smoothies and milkshakes. We are talking about using the free 3D software, 3D modeling software, uh, to create reference photos for your traditional artwork. This is something that I do all the time. Um, it, and there's a few reasons. When hiring a real life physical model, there's uh, usually time constraints and it can get expensive. By um, creating my own models using 3D modeling software, uh, I save myself a lot of time and money. Um, and also it's just really fun. I can get really nitpicky, really exact with how I am creating my reference photos. So. Your first step is to download Blender. It's a free software. It's so powerful, um, so awesome to use, but go ahead and download it. And when you open it, you're gonna get, you're gonna be presented with this main menu. We're gonna hit general and you are presented with the default cube. Um, get used to seeing it because you're gonna see it a lot, but what we're gonna do first is get rid of it. So go ahead and click your cube, hit X, and we're gonna confirm that we wanna delete it. All right, the next thing that we're gonna do, and I should say there's two different ways that you can use Blender. Uh, one, you can sculpt and model your own reference people all from scratch, meaning you start with a ball and uh, you use your sculpting tools just like you might clay and you sculpt out the features that you want your reference photo to have. Um, it's a little time intensive to do, a little too time intensive for this first beginner's tutorial. So your second option is to start with a base, a head base and make it your own. And that's exactly what we're gonna do today. So I've gone ahead and I've downloaded a free uh, female head base um, and you can find those online. You, uh, one thing that you want to be careful with is when you're downloading models online, you want to make sure that the license says that you can use those for your artwork. Um, typically if you're paying for different models, um, it's going to come with a commercial license for it. You just need to check for it. Um, with free ones, you want to be, be really careful with that. You're, that they are, um, you're allowed to do that. So I'm gonna to go to File, Import, and you wanna make sure you're downloading this, the wavefront, wavefront.obj file. Um, and I've already done that, it's on my desktop. So you'll see here it says free base female head. All right, and it's, um, it's just, you know, pretty standard bald model head. But this is what we're gonna to use to start out with. Um, I'm going to click camera view. I like to use camera view um, because it's an easy starting point. Uh, but I want my camera to be head on with my person. And it's not, it's kind of at an, at an angle. Um, this is its default position. So what I normally do as a first step, I go zero everything out. So zero, zero, zero. I put my rotation, X rotation at 90 and everything else at zero. Now, because my model's head is at zero, 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 my camera's at zero, 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 they're right on top of each other. So I need to go move that. Uh, I'm just gonna take my Y location and zoom out. All right, uh, the next thing that I wanna do is make sure that my virtual canvas is the same dimensions as my physical canvas. So I'm gonna be painting later on a 16 by 20 canvas. So I wanna make sure my this view is the same, which it's not right now. So click into your printer and I'm gonna change this to 1600 by 2000. All right, and now I have the same dimensions as my 16 by 20 canvas, but I want this a little more zoomed in. I want my person taking up um, a good chunk of that canvas. Now, I want you to think of your virtual camera just like a real camera. You can change um, the location, the distance, the focal length, and that's exactly what we're gonna do right now. So 50 millimeters is, um, pretty close to what your eye naturally sees. So this is a good start. Um, you can go ahead, you can make it fisheye, check that out. 
some fisheye angles. But what I'm gonna do today is make it 85 millimeters, which is a really pleasant portrait uh, focal length. So there you can see right there. Uh, so those are the two things that I, I typically do when I first start out. I set up my camera dimensions and I set my camera focal length. Now, the next thing that I typically do is I click into my object, my free base female head. I go down to material properties and now we're going to change things like the color. We're going to play around with some of these settings and this is where the real fun kicks in. Um, we're right now in solid mode. Uh, this mode is really, um, it's not very intensive on your computer. So it's good to do a lot of editing in this mode, um, but it doesn't give you a clear example of what it really looks like. So we wanna go into render preview. So this is now what my render looks like. Um, I'm gonna change my light. I want my light to be up above. I want it uh, I want some nice classic portrait lighting on her. Okay, that looks good. Typically what I'm looking for when I'm doing lighting for my reference photos, I want nice shadows under my eyebrow bone, under my nose, under my top lip, under my bottom lip, and under the chin. And that's exactly what we have right here. So we're gonna go back into our female head and the first thing that I uh, do in this tab is I increase my subsurface scattering. And what subsurface scattering is, is it's, it affects how the light is interacting with your object, how much it's entering your object. Now that's kind of a, a funny thing to think about, but in real life, light is interacting with your skin all the time. So if we look at our ears, our nose, anything that's kind of thin, um, when you have a bright light on it, it's gonna, gonna make it glow or, or light it up. And you'll see some of that red here. Now, it's looking okay, but there's something right off the bat that I can do to make this look even better. And that's going to my render properties. And I'm gonna change my render engine from EV to cycles. Now, it's gonna take a second to load and it's, uh, it's going to be kind of noisy because this is just a render preview. Remember, this is just a preview. When I actually render this for real life, it's going to look um, super smooth. It's going to look really nice, but already adding it. Oh, I'm going to change that to GPU um, already. This is looking a lot more realistic than Eevee. Let's switch back to Eevee real quick. So check that out. That's Eevee. Here's cycles. Now, uh, Cycles isn't supported on Macs, um, which is one of the reasons why I use a PC for all of my Blender, my Blender files. Okay, so let's go back into, I'm actually gonna increase my subsurface scattering just to show you a little bit more. You can see all that red coming in through there. Just, um, it's nice how it makes the light interact with your object, which is um, what you really want when you're creating a reference photo. Some of the other things I might do is bring down my roughness. Uh, let me just show you if I bring that down all the way, it starts to look a little plasticky. Uh, so I don't want it all the way down, but I do want it down enough that it's gonna help inform my object. And I'm gonna bring, I'm just playing with the lighting. That's, that's the fun of this, guys, is you can play around, make it as dramatic, as natural, as unrealistic as you want, but it's really fun just to play around with. Um, one of the other things you can do, uh, we're in object mode, okay? You can change the rotation of your model, the location, we're gonna bring our camera down a little bit. Let's bring the camera down and angle it up. Um, I love this angle when I'm painting. And let's go back into our female head. Um, some of the other things you can do is you can change the color of it. Uh, I wanna show you, I have a painting here. Uh, I can't see myself on the screen, uh, by the way. So hopefully um, I'm showing you guys, but this was actually a 3D model that I used and created and uh, changed it to red and changed the lighting to help, uh, help me come up with that. 
Um, above my head, there's like a black and white painting. Hopefully you can see it. Uh, I think I'm pointing to the right one. But um, yeah, this black and white painting is was also a 3D model that I used to make a reference photo. Okay, so I'm, I typically like it to be, sometimes I'll do a little yellowish orange with just a little tiny bit of saturation. You can also go into this World Properties tab and change your background. You can make it super light, super dark, but I am gonna actually, I wanna darken my model up just a tiny bit. All right, that's already, this is looking really cool to me. But remember I said, we're using this as a base. Um, the base is supposed to be just that. It's a base, it's not your final object. Um, I'm gonna go into sculpt mode, and this is where a lot of the fun happens. Now I am gonna change this back to solid mode because when I'm doing my sculpting, it can get a little intensive on your computer. And especially when I'm recording at the same time, I don't want my computer freezing. So I'm gonna do a lot of my sculpting in here. And as you'll see, there's a lot of tools, a lot of tools at your disposal. There's clay, um, you can inflate, you can smooth, you can pinch, grab, anything that you can imagine. But one of my favorite tools is this one right here, the grab tool. And now I'm gonna be a little extreme and show you what it does, but uh, you can just, it's exactly that. You can grab things and you can move them. You can move them in or out. So let's take this nose for example, and we're gonna start sculpting the nose. You can completely change it around. Okay, I went a little extreme there, so I'm gonna take my smooth and we're gonna smooth some of that back. All right. Grab my grab tool again. Let's turn it. Uh, I wanna bring the nose in and I wanna add a little bump. I like that. All right, now the point of this uh, part is to just have fun with it. I'm gonna bring the chin in. Um, one of the kind of dead giveaways for something being a computer model is if it's too symmetrical. So when you're in this process, make sure to um, make sure that you're not uh, being too symmetrical. You know, it's okay if the cheek on here is a little more sunken in than on the other side. Uh, play around with the expressions. Let's go ahead. Um, this always makes a huge difference playing with the brow bones. Let's look at the brow bone on here. I'm gonna bring that in a bit. Okay. And I'm gonna take my inflate tool and we're gonna add some volume to that bottom lip. And we're gonna inflate some of the cheekbones here. So as I mentioned, this is just a, a intro video. If I were really using this, um, I'd probably spend about an hour really making it my own, completely changing all of the, the features, adding on to it. I'd probably give it hair, um, which I would do with the clay strips. You can see how, you know, I'd build some hair and then maybe smooth it out until I had a nice hairstyle that I liked. I'm gonna um, undo for now, but we're just gonna leave, leave her hairless for now. I might smooth out bring down that head a little bit. But you get the point. Um, it really is so endless. Let's go back and let's look at how we have it now. Um, the changes that we made were pretty, pretty subtle. But you can get, get as extreme with this. A lot of times I will have different reference photos of different facial features that I really like. And I'll model the facial features to look like that. Maybe from one photo, I wanna take a few of these facial features. Uh, I wanna take a few from, from others. I typically, I love to have my ears sticking out when I'm painting people. I do that a lot. Okay, but you get the whole, the whole point. So I've started to go in and model it. But there's one other thing that I want to do that I think is really cool. And that is, let's go back into um, object mode. That is posing. 
Um, we're gonna do just really simple posing with this. If you are building a whole body, you can pose the arms, you can, I mean, you can, it's endless. You can build backgrounds in this. Um, it's really so cool, but we need to add some bones. So what we're gonna do is hit shift A and oops, shift A and under armature, we're gonna do a single bone. Now it looks like nothing has happened. And that's because it's added the bone at the zero, zero, zero point, which we know our head is in. So they're on top of each other, it's covering it up. So what you wanna do is click this, uh, object properties, go to viewport display and hit in front. Oh, oh, there we go. Gonna move it down and we're in edit mode. So I'm gonna hit this E and that's gonna let me add a second bone, okay? And let's turn this to the side. We wanna line up our bones. We want our one for our neck and one for our head. And I typically line it up some, something like this. Now for the sake of this tutorial, I, um, I'm only putting in two bones. That's gonna let me basically move the head from the neck and shoulders. But if I, um, usually I'll do three. So I'll do one for the neck, one for the shoulders, one for the head. And that way I can, I can really move things around. But this is just, you know, the sake of time. So let's go back to our camera view. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click, I'm gonna go back to object mode. I'm gonna click my female head, control, click armature. So now I have both of those selected. And now we're gonna hit control P and that's gonna bring up our parenting menu. And we wanna hit set parent to armature deform with automatic weight. Now this is gonna take a few seconds, but it's gonna be well worth your weight because uh, it's gonna apply some algorithms. Or it's gonna do its magic in the background and it's gonna um, pair up your bones to your body. So now I have a new mode available to me, which is pose mode. And so I'm gonna click rotate. And so now I can just click any one of these and I can now rotate my head in any direction that I want, which is, I mean, just so unbelievably cool to me. I mean, check that out. I mean, your possibilities are really endless when you're creating your reference images. So I, I like to, um, let's find a fun kind of pose to do. I mean, that looks cool to me. And let's, there we go. All right, um, I don't need that in front anymore, but I mean, check that out. I'm gonna move, I'm gonna go back to object mode and move my light back a bit. Yeah. I mean, what is it? We're like 15 minutes in and we've created this really cool reference photo um, for us to use. Uh, but hopefully you guys have seen just how endless your possibilities are um, when it comes to all of this. But I like that. This is this would be a fun um, person to paint or to draw, and I would just continue to um, you know do different do different things with it. You can create all sorts of different references. You can do all sorts of different lighting situations. Let's go into our light. Um, you can make it really dramatic. I mean, it really is endless and it's super fun to play around with. Um, I hope you guys find this as cool as I do and hopefully um, you can see how this might be a helpful step in your workflow. Um, like I said, you don't wanna, at least I typically, I don't make one-to-one -one copies of these, uh, but I use them as references to help inform my decisions how um, and it helps me see how light is going to play with the different facial features on my painting. Let's say you have a reference photo that you really like, but you wanna change the lighting in it. Well, you can just 
go ahead and pop that into Blender. Um, kind of do a, a do your base, recreate it, change the lighting how you want, and then you can take the facial features from the reference image, but the lighting from Blender. I mean, there's so many different ways that you can use this in your workflow. Um, but yeah, that's that's kind of it. And hopefully you found this helpful. I don't know, leave me a comment. If you try it out, send me the picture. I wanna see how it works. But yeah, thanks guys.